Hey guys, the purpose of this video is only to show you a trick to help um, run high score on Treasure. And this is not really like a strategy or a clear video. This is a way to deal with Kresnik and his absolute pain in the ass autocast disease. Um, for those of you that have been trying to get high score on Treshin, you know that disease is basically required to get those highest possible numbers. Um, Kresnik autocast disease every turn, and because disease wears off slightly randomly, um, because of Kresnik auto applying it on turn one, by the time you get to turn six, the boss has usually gone immune to disease by then. So you really want to apply disease. Um, at the earliest on turn three. That way disease is always up guaranteed on turn six. Um, applying disease on turn one or turn two, the boss is frequently going to be immune by turn six. Um, there is, it turns out, a way to stop Kresnik from applying disease on the boss on turns one and two. There's actually two ways. We're gonna go over both of them. So let's real quick jump over here and you know I've been running variants on 81, 240. Um, I'm actually currently rank 50 because I've got a really high roll. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, my usual team. But uh, Kresnik, there's two ways to deal with this. One way is to use an unenhanced Kresnik. So his skill, Miraculous Miasma, he has it in both base and shift form. Um, this skill right here, this is the one that auto-cast the um, deadly outbreak every single turn. He casts this, it applies all ailments. This is only done at rank two and above. So if you have an unenhanced Kresnik or like a duplicate Kresnik, maybe you've pulled like so many, you've got EX3 and then extra copies, uh, you can even level up a second Kresnik and never enhance this ability. At rank one, unenhanced, it does not auto cast at all. It will never take that control out of your hands. That's the best way to deal with it. I personally don't have enough Kresniks to level up a second one, so I have to do it the other way. The other way is the retarget trick. Now credit, I think this was originally Sean's idea from the Discord. Um, hopefully I'm giving the right person credit, but I was told by a few people in the Discord how to deal with, how to deal with this, and um, it works, and it's, it is the biggest biggest time saver and like quality of life because I no longer have to worry about disease RNG on turn six when I'm running for high score. Disease will always be up for me on turn six because you can retarget the disease to your team. So we're going to show that in action. The, the, the one important thing you need to be here, I'm um, doing here, is make sure your Kresnik is status immune because he's going to be redirecting that ailment inflict to himself and the whole party. Um, you can't inflict ailments on other party members, but you can inflict ailments on yourself. So he needs to be immune to all the ailments that he's redirecting to the entire party. Okay, so let's get in here and show. Now it is a little bit tricky to do because, okay, so we're gonna, sh we're gonna show it in real time. So all the auto casting, you need to retarget the party during this. So here's the boss's ambush and here's our auto casting. So as soon as auto casting starts, Go ahead and target the boss, because the boss is easier to target. Then click on your party members and retarget your own party member. Now the thing is, every single auto cast that happens from every single member will drop your retargeting. So you've got to just keep spamming this retargeting until the disease goes out. If you've got lots of auto casts loaded up on Kresnik, like I do, um, the disease is going to be one of the last auto casts he does. So just keep, keep retargeting your party over and over and over and over as quickly as you possibly can. Just keep redoing it. Keep redoing it until disease goes out for the turn. So I'm going to show you. We're going to retarget the party, immediately target the boss, retarget someone else, immediately target the boss, retarget someone else. Keep doing this over and over and over. We don't want one of these skills to get through. Target someone else, immediately target target someone else, keep doing it. This is a pain in the ass, but it does get you th that RNG removed. Keep retargeting. I know this is irritating. Trust me, it's better than wasting a run on RNG though. Keep retargeting. There's Hex. You saw Hex go out that little uh, shadow circle. The next cast is going to be Disease. So 
target. I'm going to keep doing it just in case. Keep retargeting. Okay, when you retarget the same person, if you do it so quickly that you've done it before and autocast goes off, you'll see this clear target thing. Never clear target. Pick someone else in the party and then force target. It doesn't, doesn't matter who. Just force target anyone. Keep doing it. There's the cast. We're going to retarget anyway just for safety. There it is, right there, that green cloud. He tried to inflict disease on our own party, where, of course, um, he's immune and the rest of the party cannot be inflicted by another party member. That was a, a patch from, like, five years ago when people used to cheese petrifying your own party um, with one unit. You can still do it, just but uh, not with one unit like you used to be able to. Anyway, as you see, um, the, the boss is not diseased, which is exactly what we want. We did not put his disease diminishing returns like on a clock starting turn one. Now you will notice right here, we redirected this hex ability, damage over time from Kresnik. Um, I can't tell you the reasoning. It doesn't deal damage to your party, but it doesn't deal damage to your party. It's supposed to deal 100,000 damage per ailment on your on your team. Um, I guess because we don't have any ailments like disease and petrifying all, um, we're not getting any hexes. So it's not, it's not gonna deal any damage. So don't panic when you redirect hex to your party. Now, the other thing is because, um, first of all, let's go ahead and do my usual thing. We're going to imbue the boss with, um, with light. There we go. So everyone's imbued with light. Um, so the, the other thing is Chaos Grenade. So normally Chaos Grenade, um, you know, you, you do the Chaos Grenade, you bounce it onto the party, bounce it onto yourself so you can break your party for morale. The catch is Chaos Grenade also inflicts disease. So instead of using Chaos Grenade for the first two turns, we're going to use... World Destroyer. This is an old trial reward. It also breaks all enemies, AOE, but it doesn't inflict ailments. And it's again a physical attack. So, you know, same as Chaos Grenade, make sure your party is immune to the damage, either, you know, Mirage or Evasion or um, Elemental Imbues, etc. So we're going to go ahead and use um, World Destroyer to break our own party. And then again, retarget it like always. Um, this animation is quite a bit more irritating than Chaos Grenade, which is the reason I like Chaos Grenade way more. But it does the same thing. It breaks your own party. It gives you lots of morale. So there you go. And then, you know, the rest of the stuff, like a usual high score run, we're going to be doing all this. We're going to bring her. We're going to do um, the usual stuff. Provoke, morale, morale. And then uh, barrage. So, okay. So there we go for turn one. And again, you don't want to disease the boss on turn two either. Because the way it works, um, disease, when it's applied, um, unless the boss has a special self-cure skill like Mortarum did, where he is guaranteed to cure disease immediately or poison or whatever, um, Treshin doesn't have that. Treshin only loses ailments when they wear off naturally. So the way it works, okay, so I I'm gonna explain it in a minute. We gotta do the retarget trick again. So let the boss have his turn. And then once your autocast starts happening, we're going to do retargeting again. So we don't disease the boss a second time. All right. Wait for the autocasting. Now, I actually let, let a few autocasts go through because I know from experience that the first couple of autocasts that my Kresnik is doing are things like Baton, Galbana Lilies, Philosopher's Stone. Those autocasts go first before his innate autocast, and I know that. So I don't start the retargeting immediately because I know the first like four or five autocasts are just item autocasts. And then, then Kresnik is going to start doing things like, in his shift form, he's going to do the morale autocast first, then he does the hex autocast, then he does the, um, the ailment autocast. And that's the one you really want to retarget. Technically speaking, you can time it and you can wait until you see Kresnik do Hex and then really quickly time it in between and jump and intercept that ailment immunity um, autocast. But uh, for me, it's easier. I prefer to just to spam, the, spam the retargeting instead of trying to time it correctly. I just spam it as quickly as I can. That way I, that way I don't got to worry about timing um, as much. Uh, now, of course, sometimes the timing does get messed up and the boss does get... A disease anyway because I, I, I was too slow but we're gonna go ahead and try to start intercepting those those auto cast and retarget um, I'm gonna just keep retargeting as quickly as possibly can because every there's a there's a there's a too quick okay there's the 700 that was the morale so Kresnik's next auto cast is gonna be hex we're gonna try to intercept it if we can just keep spamming the retarget as quickly as possible there is his cast for um, hex his next auto cast is gonna be the ailments Again, we're going to keep we keep intercepting because, like I said, 
every single autocast from any party member will drop your force target. I know from experience, my Laura is still casting stuff, and if I if I like you know take it easy, I'm like oh this I can just target this and then I'm done. Um, sometimes Laura will get an autocast on this turn, or like um, Louise will or something, and uh, it'll mess me up. So again, I just keep retargeting as quickly as I possibly can until I have guaranteed to see that disease go out. And there's the disease. We're gonna target one more time. There it is. So we didn't disease the boss at all on turns one and two. So now we can target the boss again, reload, world destroyer, target our own party, let that go off, we can break our own party. And there we go. We can do morale stuff, we can do morale stuff, we can do morale stuff, um, hunting, gifted, gifted, and there we go. So there, there it is. So turn two and one and two, we never applied disease to the boss, even though Kresnik is trying to autocast it. Um, so anyway, as I was explaining the way ailments work on a boss that doesn't have a special skill coded for ailments, and, and Treshin does not. Treshin doesn't have any kind of special ailment cure. So his ailment um, cure is just the natural way the game works. Now the way ailments work, the first turn of application, ailments are a guaranteed to stay up for that turn. They will never fade on the same turn you apply them. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and let the disease auto-apply on turn three. So at, at this point, we don't care anymore about um, disease. So there's disease. Boom, don't care. Because this turn, we're going to be doing things like, uh, you know, carton for the Dark Absorb. You, you guys know how the high score runs work. And then Louise is taking over my Chaos Grenade. But it's actually okay at this point because um, we don't care about disease anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and explain the way disease works for uh, the way all ailments work on enemies. So the first turn you apply the ailment, it is always guaranteed to be active, no matter what. It's never going to fade on the same turn you apply it. And does ailments, or ailments only fade at the start of enemy's turns. Um, on the second turn that the boss is, it has an ailment. Also, you can't refresh ailments. So if an ailment is on a boss, trying to reapply an ailment on the same on an already inflicted boss won't do anything. It, it won't refresh the duration, it won't apply, it just doesn't work. You can't refresh a duration of an ailment on a boss until it wears off, either naturally or through some kind of boss skill that cures himself. So, the first turn you apply disease, it is always guaranteed to be there. The second turn disease is, is there, there's a 30% chance that it wears off. The turn after that, if it's not worn off yet, it's a 60% chance to wear off. The turn after that, it's always it's, it's guaranteed to wear off. So it's always going to be worn off after three turns. So because we applied it on turn three, even worst case scenario, we applied it on turn three. On the boss's turn three, it won't fade. On our turn four, disease is, our, is still up because it didn't fade yet. So we can't reapply it on turn four. It just gets, it gets it's ignored. On the boss's turn four, there's a 30% there's a chance it fades. If it does, who cares? If it doesn't, whatever. Assuming it does fade on the boss's turn four, then on our turn five, the boss is going to be reapplied with disease for the second time. And on this boss, he can only be, a, he can only be diseased twice. So he goes immune to further applications after the second time. So on turn five, he's going to be diseased again the second time and then on the boss's turn five it's impossible to wear off it can never fade on the same turn so it'll still be there on turn five then on our turn six the boss hasn't had a second turn yet so disease is still there for the burst turn so as long as the first disease application is on turn three or later it is guaranteed to always be there on turn six um, with Kresnik on the party just let him let him go ahead and reapply disease naturally without any kind of retargeting, starting from turn three. Don't do it on turns one or turn two. The reason it sometimes fades by turn six, if you do it on turn one or turn two, let's assume turn one you disease the boss. Turn one, the boss is diseased. The boss takes turn one, nothing happens. Turn two, you can't reapply it. The boss is turn two, 30% chance it fades, boom, disease is gone on the boss's turn two. 
On your turn three, you apply disease. The boss is diseased on turn three. It can't fade on turn three. On your turn four, you can't refresh it. On the boss's turn four, let's assume the 30% check, um, let's assume it wears off on turn four. It's gone forever. Let's assume it stays there on turn four, but sometimes it usually will stay there on turn four. And then, okay, the boss takes a turn four. Turn five, we can't reapply it. When the boss takes his turn five, the disease fades. It's gone. Then turn six comes. Disease is gone. It can't be reapplied. The boss is now immune. That's why a lot of times when it goes up on turn one or turn two, it fades by turn six. So there you go. There's how the retargeting will work. Um, so just retarget as much as you possibly can. Make sure your Kresnik is ailment immune. And that's how you can control disease. So it will always be there on turn six which allows you to remove a big chunk of the RNG as you're running for high score. Now the other RNG, of course, is turn three. And just for, just for, just for the sake of amusement, we're gonna go ahead and see if my Kresnik um, survives this turn, or my Maeve survives this turn three. Um, with my gear, it's actually like a 50-50 if she survives or not, just out of curiosity, we'll just see. Yeah, this is the other RNG and the high score runs. Assuming you you can't gear your Mae for complete immunity, I cannot. Um, oh, this is, this, this is a great turn three. Wow, that was like the best ever. Holy, wow, that was that was a good turn three. Anyway, this is not really like a score run or anything. I was just wanting to explain the disease thing. Um, so now, yeah, there there's the RNG how to deal with it with disease if you've enhanced your Kresnik. So hopefully this helps you guys um, run variants without having to fight the RNG for disease. So just retarget yourself as much as you possibly can, and good luck on high scores. See you in a bit.